Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a simple way to calculate the implied volatility of an underlying using option markets that has been proposed by Brenner and Sir Brachmanian in 1988 in their famous article in Financial Analyst Journal. The idea behind it is quite simple. First of all, it is very uh, conventional to use add-the-money options to extract implied volatility. First of all, because those markets, add-the-money markets, are generally the most liquid, they have got the lowest bid-ask spreads, and therefore you can estimate implied volatility with greater precision, less noise. And second, as can be shown using option Vega, the sensitivity of option value to volatility of the underlying, uh, near at the money options are those that are the most sensitive to changes in implied volatility, and so it makes the most sense to use at the money or at least near at the money strikes to estimate the implied volatility. However, um, as Brenner and Subrahmanian argue, the procedure that involves the newton raphson iterative method or numerical optimization that we showed in the previous video is unnecessarily complicated if the underlying price is close to the strike price, because the formula of the Black-Scholes model can be simplified to provide a nice closed-form approximation of implied volatility. And if we base our calculation just on one option, say one call option, then we can easily calculate the implied volatility based on the premium of the call, the spot price, and the maturity of the option T. And this constant, 0 0.398, emerges from the uh, numerical approximations of the uh, standard normal distribution function that is involved in the Black-Scholes formula. So here, let's apply this particular procedure to the options in Tesla as of the 24th of April 2023 with 19th of May expiry, um, keeping in mind that the current spot price is $162.83 and the premium for respective options at near at the money strikes, again as advised, are as follows. So first, for the maturity of the option, we just need to subtract the current date from the expiry date and divide by 365, as we want maturity in years always, giving us roughly 0.07. And that's all we need to know in terms of calculations to figure out the implied volatility based on the Brenner and Subrahmanian method. So for the call option, let's say we want 160 strike. So we just divide the call premium by 0 0.398 times our spot price that's given and the square root of maturity. That gives us an implied volatility of a whopping 70%. Again, Tesla is expected to be quite volatile over the next month, uh, as it turns out, given the option prices. However, this is not the most precise approximation that we can do because the strike of 165 is closer to our spot price than the strike of 160. So the motivation would be to go for the strike that is the closest to the spot price. And that gives us a value of 54%. We can see that the gap between the two estimates is quite large, both uh, quantitatively and qualitatively. However, uh, this poses an issue um, as we need um, to acknowledge that spot prices can be quite far from uh, strike prices that are available. Again, generally strike prices are just nice round numbers and uh, we choose an appropriate number of uh, strikes as an exchange, for example, that facilitates option trading to enable enough liquidity in each of those markets but provide enough variety. Uh, and uh, unavoidably, sometimes the spot price is quite far away from either strikes that are available. And uh, for this particular reason, Brennan Sabrahmanian also provided a calculation based not on an individual option, but on a straddle with uh, both a call and a port 
at a near at the money strike. And their argument is that this allows you to estimate the implied volatility um, even in a situation where your spot price is slightly far away from strikes that are available. And it also filters out a lot of the noise associated with bid ask spreads and maybe potential mispricings associated with call and put markets. So for that, we need to figure out the price of a straddle. Again, it's just the sum of call and put premium for a particular strike. And then we can calculate the implied volatility based on the half of the price of the straddle divided by the same expression, 0 0.398 times the spot price and times the square root of maturity that we need to lock as well. And that generates very close um, implied volatility figures of 54% or 52%. We can see that filters out a lot of noise that was associated with using just the call option, say. Uh, so this, first of all, narrows down the range of implied volatility estimations, and it also allows you to use this approach, uh, which is, again, an approximation. So there is some estimation error involved, but this particular uh, method based on the straddle allows you to use this approach for a wider range of strikes and for a wider range of markets. And that's the approach of Brenner and Subrahmanyan to estimating the implied volatility without having to rely on numerical optimization or newton raphson iterations. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.